there she is. That's Marlene Warren. Um, and there's Sheila Keen Warren. Sheila Keen Warren arrested in 2017 for the murder of Marlene May Warren. Now, they're not related. They just both, at some point, were married or are married to Michael Warren. You see, Marlene was married to Michael, and then Sheila, according to prosecutors, shot and killed Marlene, and then moved on and married Michael. So Sheila and Michael, still together, but not really together because Sheila's been locked up. Now, Michael hasn't been charged with anything, uh, denies any involvement, and says that um, Sheila Keene didn't do it. They should be looking for some uh, a hitman uh, somewhere that may have done it. He says there might be evidence of that. You may hear about something like that at trial. I'm not sure what the defense is going to be. However, what we do know is that Sheila married Michael after Marlene was murdered, and now she's been locked up for five years, and she's been writing some love letters that I want to take a look at in a second. First, I want to introduce our guests who are joining us. Uh, tonight in Orlando, Florida, psychotherapist and CEO of Life Counseling Solutions, Dr. Janie Lacey is with us. And in Los Angeles, California, forensic psychiatrist, trial expert witness, and columnist of Inside the Criminal Mind, Dr. Carol Lieberman. Great to see you both tonight. So while I have you here, let me um, show you some of the portions of some of these letters that were written between, I think, 2018 and 2020 while she's locked up for the murder of her husband's first wife. Let's listen. December 19th, 2018. Hey, baby, this year is almost over, and I hope that it won't be long now, and I will be out here next year. I miss you so very, 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 very much. I'm always thinking and praying for you, your loving wife forever and always. My dearest love, there is no words to describe how much I love and miss you. I feel empty inside, and my whole body aches for you. You are a part of me, and I will always feel you with me, even though you are so many miles away. I long to be in your arms and to share all these feelings with you. This is the most miserable time, the time that we are apart, but we will survive. It's only temporary. Hang in there and be strong. You are such a good and loving and caring man. Don't let other people harden you. Don't let them have the satisfaction of taking any of your spirit away from you. You are good. You are a lion, the king. My dearest sweetheart, the days are so long and silent without you. I can't wait for this nightmare to end. Jesus, please continue to keep me strong is what I pray for. I never could find the right words to tell you how much I love you or how you make my life complete. I feel that my actions speak louder than words. So I hope you have no doubts. Sending you all the love I could fit into this envelope. I love and miss you so much. I hate that I've been away for so long. Here are some more recipes, but instead of chicken, I would use pork. I'm looking forward to us making some great meals together. I think of food a lot, but I only miss you. I would give everything up just to be with you. Food would just be a bonus. My faithful and loving husband, I miss seeing your smiling face and that lift of your eyebrow. I do have a picture of you in my mind, but that is not the same. I miss everything about you and our family and friends. A happy thought, I just got back from my hour outside. It was sunny and a nice breeze. I get a visit from Charles tonight and I get to talk to you. I love and miss you so very much and my thoughts and prayers are always with you. My dearest love, I love and miss you so much. I think about you all the time. I want to come home. I hate being in this little room all of the time, day in, day out. It's so wrong to be treated this way. I would never wish this on anyone, and I don't see how anyone could hold a person so long like they do. If they were made to stay here like me, they would have a whole book of new rules. If a person isn't mental when they come in, they sure will be mental when they leave. My dearest love, today is Sunday and another week has passed. 30 days until my next court date. I wish time would go by faster for me, but as you know, it doesn't. Days seem like weeks. I'm confident my innocence will be proven. 
I just want to have the opportunity to help others stay on the right track and don't let drugs and tough get them in trouble. It's so devastating for everyone when something happens to a loved one. No one can understand until it happens to them. I hope no one ever has to go through this like me. Forever your loving wife. Wow. All right. Janie, I'll let you go first. Uh, your impressions of, of what we just heard uh, from Sheila Keen Warren in these letters from inside the jail. Well, my first impression is I think of addictive love, right? So working with so many women where they get into these fantasy type relationships and they're obsessive and they're filled with these um, fantastical love ideals. And sometimes we see that they hold on to these certain types of standards. And when I'm hearing these letters and the words that she's using, I'm hearing fantasy, I'm hearing obsessive love, and I'm hearing also keeping hope alive on the other side, potentially not knowing what her husband is thinking. Dr. Carol Lieberman, what, what did you hear from Sheila Keen's love letters? Well, I see it a little differently. Um, I see it as she's trying too hard to convince him that she will be his loving wife forever. She doesn't want him to to take up with another woman, in other words. You know, she was his mistress uh, when he was married to Marlene. And um, she doesn't want that to happen to her. She doesn't want him to forget her. And I think th there's also something else that you know, um, Marlene had, had told her parents that um, if anything happened to her, that they should look at Michael. You know, he would have, it, it was him who did something to her. Now, he has an alibi for that particular time, but... Um, but, you know, it's funny, he said, I think a hit man did it. There are also hit women. And I think that, that that's what um, the killer clown did. I think they were working in cahoots, really. And she's trying in these letters to, um, to cement that, to like remind him of you know, their close bond and so on. She is like, the, what really is fascinating is that she is like, um, she put a clown twist on the Long Island Lolita story. You know, Amy Fisher, she had an affair with this man who also had a business with cars. He was doing a, he was a body shop owner, Joey, Joey Buttafuoco. Yes, you remember him. And this man, Michael, is a car rental or whatever. He does something with cars too. So, so um, the so so Sheila uh, did. You know, she came up to the door, albeit dressed as a clown, and she shot uh, the wife in the face, just like Amy Fisher did. So, and, and the reason why I think that's uh, germane is because apparently in prison, she has been reading uh, romance novels and reading um, um, murder mysteries, you know, crime stories. And uh, of course she is the embodiment of both of those. And I, so I think it's not far fetched to think that before she did this crime over the years when the whole Long Island Lolita thing was happening, that she was paying a lot of attention to that. She may, very well may have. Um, Dr. Janie, we only have like a, a few seconds left here in this segment, but did you hear anything in those letters that would make you think that last minute she might seek some sort of a deal and maybe provide some information on someone else who may be involved in all of this? Well, I potentially heard a lot of manipulation, you know, to Dr. Lieberman's point, right? So her being this intensity, we're hearing intense language, we're hearing all of these things. So I would imagine when her husband is reading these letters, he's knowing what's going on there. So potentially there potentially is some alibi that may may come out. We shall see. All right, Dr. Jenny Lacey, Dr. Carol Lieberman staying with us. Uh, when we come back, we're going to take a, a listen to uh, Marlene's son, um, who spoke about what happened that day as well. Also, coming up next hour. In Waukesha, Wisconsin, the accused Christmas parade killer in court representing himself for the murder of six people, including an eight-year-old boy. Tonight, we are live from the courthouse with the latest. Have you read or seen a complaint in this matter at any, at any time? Objection is irrelevant. Grounds. Overruled, she may answer. Sorry, what was the question? Have you read or seen a complaint? No, I don't know what complaint is being referred to. No.
was a holiday parade that quickly turned tragic. Evil has arrived and it's shown what it can do. Darrell Brooks is accused of killing six people when he drove his vehicle through a crowd of spectators. In a surprising move, Brooks waived his right to an attorney and instead will be representing himself. Our cameras will be inside the courtroom as a community searches for justice. The Deadly Parade Crash Trial. Live coverage weekday mornings, 9, 8 central, only on 14. 30 years ago, a person dressed as a clown, holding flowers and balloons, rang the doorbell at Marlene Warren's home. But when Marlene answered, the clown shot her to death. Advanced DNA testing led authorities to Sheila Keen Warren. The defendant ended up marrying the victim's husband. It's like a lifetime movie plot. This is going to be a riveting case. The Killer Clown Murder Trial. Live coverage starting October 21st on Court TV. October 21st, it all starts the killer clown trial right here on Court TV. Uh, we've been taking a closer look at the case uh, all hour. Still with us, uh, Dr. Janie Lacey, psychotherapist and forensic psychiatrist, Dr. Carol Lieberman. I want to play for you both. Um, this is Marlene's son, who was 20 years old at the time, but was at the home with some friends when that doorbell rang. And, and, and the clown shot and killed his mother. Um, let's take a listen. Uh, it was close. Uh, we were best friends. She was all. She was uh, my my life. Um, I look at myself and I still see her in me. The caring, loving heart. The day you lost your mom, do you remember like just what, what were you, was it just kind of a normal morning? Or were you just having breakfast? Or what do you remember about that morning? Well, I remember um, I have gotten a car accident and I had a cast on my leg. and. Um, yeah, it was just a regular morning. Um, <clears throat> we were pretty much all together, you know, um, right there at the door, and uh, she answered it. I was at a loss. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I felt my heart, my soul just get ripped out of my body. And it, uh, it was a tragic thing. What would you say, um, you know, if Sheila Keen is convicted, what would you say, like, if you could speak to her face to face? What would you want her to know that she took from you? She took my life <clears throat> um, out of selfishness and greed. And um, I would tell her there's still help. Um, there's still time for help. So for Joe Ahrens, who, who lost his mom, he's lost, he lost other members of his family prior to that happening. Um, he's a witness in all of this, uh, Dr. Janey. Um, he's going to have to testify. And I believe part of his prior description of the clown was that it was a man. So the defense is going to do a lot to go after him and his initial description of, of who shot and killed his mom. But what, what do you suspect that moment is going to be like for him uh, when he takes the stand? Well, when we consider that something that normal day and something that someone did not anticipate happening, especially a 20 year old boy, 20 year old young man, right? Of course, we can understand that the shock and all the details get fuzzy because your world just got ripped up. You know, you didn't anticipate this. You've lost the most important person in your life. So looking back, it is very normal for survivors of watching and vicariously looking through different devastating situations have fuzzy memories because of the way that the brain works and the way that the shock and all that stuff happens. So it's anticipated and it's normal from our perspective. But I understand that he probably is going to have to recall and have a lot of uh, resiliency to be able to go back to those devastating memories where his life was forever changed in that grief process. Yeah, it, I mean, he's been waiting a long time, Dr. Carol Lieberman, for this moment. Um, and finally, it's going to happen. I, I think he probably probably believes others may be involved. At least one other may be involved, but has not been charged. Um, what are your thoughts about what that's going to be like for Joe Ahrens? Well, you know, on the one hand, it's going to be really hard facing all these memories again. On the other hand, it could be very cathartic. Um, you know, perhaps he thought that it was a man just because... Uh, 
you know, because to men, it's usually men who are clowns, like in the circus and so on. But I, I thought what he remembered the most about the, the clown was that they had brown eyes, which presumably um, Sheila has. And so, you know, I would say that that, that would help. But, you know, the connection is... Um, uh, her husband uh, had said she was having her, uh, the marriage was falling apart and he was the uh, husband was in fact um, he had hit her and so on and um, he didn't want to divorce though because he didn't want to lose half of what they had acquired and most of the property was in her name so that is how um, Sheila comes in as the potential hitman that you know she wants a relationship with him first of all and what better way <laughs> in some way of thinking uh, to get his attention, to get his love, to get his appreciation forever than to, you know, take care of his wife so that he gets all the money and, and they can be together. Um, you know, it's, it's really, um, it really is, of course, incredibly sad, but um, that it's a really interesting dynamic between the two of them because both of them, assuming that this is true, um, both you know he doesn't he knows that she holds all the cards in the in the way Sheila does because um, yes she's in in jail but um, she could tell the fact that he knew that she was going to kill his wife or something like that if in fact that that is the case so it's an interesting uh it's an interesting dynamic between the two of them absolutely dr jenny lacy dr carol Learman, appreciate your time and insight tonight we'll see you again really really soon thank you thank you